This is how element deforms when it is subjected to torsion. As we discussed before, there is not any change in the length of the element, but the element twists. What we expect to see is the change in the angle. Look at this blue angle shown here. This is what we call that as phi or angle of twist. This is the deformation happens in torsional elements. I'm going to give you equation to determine that. How much is phi or angle of twist in torsional elements? Before that, let me show you the equations that we had previously for axially loaded elements. What is the deformation for this element? Exactly, delta is FL over EA. Exactly similar to that for torsional element, which has constant cross-section area and constant force, we have this equation. Phi is TL over GJ. T is torque. L is the length of the element. G is the shear modulus or modulus of rigidity. And J is the polar moment of inertia. Compare that with the equation that we had here. They are looking exactly the same. All right, similar to that. What was the equation for system of connected axially loaded elements? We simply use the principle of superposition and add them together. Similar to this, for the system of shafts connected together, we add up the deformation or angle of twist in each segment to come up with the overall twist. And again, similar to this case, the section with the variable loading, which we had to use integral form, the case where the segment has variable cross-section or variable loading, we use this integral form to determine the deformation. All right? So for simple case, where one shaft is subjected to torque, this is the equation that we use. If we have a system of shafts, we use this equation. And in this section with the variable loading, we need to use the integral form as shown here. Now let's talk about the sign convention for torques. As I said before, we usually replace torques with the double arrow because those are easier to work with for two-dimensional problems. To do that, we use the right-hand rule which says that we need to curl our fingers toward the direction of the applied torque, then thumb shows the direction of the representative double arrow. The sign convention that you want to introduce for torque is exactly similar to the sign convention that you previously had for axially loaded elements. Look at this figure. If the double arrow torque goes outward from the surface, we assume that is positive. So the torque that is shown in this figure is positive. Now look at this figure. In this case, the torque is also going outward from the cut surface. So that would be considered again as positive torque. Note that it doesn't matter if the representative double arrow torque goes to the left or to the right. As long as it's outward from the surface, we assume it's positive. For instance, look at this figure. In this case, the torques are both outward from the surface, so we consider them as positive. Now look at the bottom figure. In this figure, both torques are inward to the cut section, and they are both negative. Note that the definition of the positive and negative torque that we have here is basically for determining the correct sign for the angle of twist. If we follow the procedure that we have described before for determining the internal torque in the system using free body diagram, we should come up with the correct sign, which is compatible with the sign convention that we have presented here. All right. Now let's solve a problem to understand how to implement the equations given for angle of twist and using the correct sign for that.